Hey there besties. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're continuing our recap of the manhwa, Avoiding the Heavenly Emperor. If you're new to this series, check the description below for links to previous episodes. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to all our supporters. If you're enjoying the content and want to help keep the channel going, consider buying me a coffee. There's a link in the description below. Every little bit helps, and I appreciate all your love and support. Lastly, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy the video. It really helps our channel grow. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. Baini smiled, feeling a sense of camaraderie and purpose with her team. Do you have a specific song in mind? Dongyi asked her. Yes, I do, Baini replied, her eyes lighting up. It's called Age of Discovery. The music captures the first careful encounters between East and West. We'll show the curiosity, tension, and strength of both cultures, with a grand finale symbolizing harmony and balance. The song is well known and popular, so it's sure to leave an impression. What do you all think? She asked the group. The girls exchanged excited glances. I love it. One girl exclaimed, and soon the entire group agreed enthusiastically. Perfect. Baini smiled. And we won't have to worry about other groups using the same song, it's unique to us. I love that idea. We'll divide into two squads, Dongyi added. One for Eastern instruments and one for Western. Some of us can act as envoys to show the cultural exchange, and we can display all of our skills in a lively, exciting performance. Awesome, the girls cheered. Okay, let's take a vote. Those in favor of Age of Discovery, Raise your hands, Dongyi said, glancing around the room. One by one, every girl raised her hand. Red Group 1 has unanimously agreed to perform Age of Discovery, she announced with a smile. Later that night, Bai Ni and Dongyi reviewed the arrangements for the performance. Dongyi pointed to a name on the chart. What about her? She's been sticking with a group of four since she joined, Bai Ni observed. We should probably keep them separated to prevent any cliques. Dongyi frowned at another name. I don't remember her. Oh, she made it to the top 100 before. I noticed she's easily influenced by others, but I think she'll do well with the right part, Baini replied. Let's put her on the left side of line 7, Dongyi said, writing it down. As they finalized their list, Dongyi smiled. We're done. You two can head out now, she told the girls on guard at the entrance. Assistant leader, check if anyone's unhappy with their positions especially for the Western instruments, and make sure we haven't placed any of our strongest members too far back, she instructed Baini. Got it, Baini nodded. As they worked late into the night, Baini couldn't help but reflect on how much she had grown. I know every one of their names by heart, she thought. This is the first time I've assigned roles so meticulously, considering each person's strengths and personality. I've learned a lot from watching how Dongyi leads. She's taught me how to trust others and collaborate in a way that's both organized and passionate. Who knew this whole process would be this exciting? Baini handed Dongyi a teacup. I didn't finish mine. You can have it. Thanks, Dongyi said, surprised at how comfortable she felt sharing something so personal. Before they knew it, the sun began to rise. It's already 5 a.m., Dongyi remarked. I didn't think we'd finish everything tonight. We worked hard but it's worth it, Baini said, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction. She had never felt so proud of her efforts. I'm so happy, she thought, sitting down for a moment to catch her breath. Is Lady Orium still working? Baini asked. No, she delegates these tasks, Dongyi explained. She gives clear instructions and then lets people volunteer. They're always eager to please her. It's not surprising. Even I'd be willing to catch a star for Lady Orium if it meant she'd compliment me, Baini said with a grin, causing Dongyi to laugh. Honestly, I always thought ladies from prestigious families were cold and conceited. That's why you and Lady Orium surprised me, Baini admitted. Well, you're from a prestigious family too, Dongyi reminded her. House Bam has a longer history than House Hay. Baini smiled faintly. That may be but families aren't judged on how long they've been around anymore. Times have changed. Then, curious, she asked, Dongyi, do you want to become the Heavenly Empress? Dongyi hesitated. I'm not sure. 
I do have a younger brother, but as the eldest, my father wants me to take over the clan. He's hoping for a son-in-law to marry into the family. And Lady Orium? Is she also under pressure to become Heavenly Empress? Baini asked. Probably. It's not really a choice for her, Dongi replied, resting her head on the table. Baini sighed, I wonder what Jio Seal is aiming for. Does she want the title of Heavenly Empress, or is she just focused on winning the competition? She shook her head. Whatever. I'm going to rest for a bit. Come over here, Dongi. We should at least get an hour of sleep, Baini suggested. My back, Dongi groaned as she laid down on her mat. Where are you going? She asked, noticing Bai Ni getting up. I'm going to secure practice time before anyone else. It's at Young Camellia Hall, right? Bai Ni replied, writing something on a sheet of paper. This early? You should rest. You'll be exhausted later, Dongi warned. Don't worry about me, Bai Ni said, covering Dongi with her bedsheet. We need you to think for us later. I'll take a power nap when no one's looking. I'll be right back. Bai Ni tiptoed out of the room, excited to secure practice time for her group. As she passed the Red Group 2's entrance, she noticed two girls sleeping outside, guarding their residence. They're sleeping like logs. I'll just sneak by, she whispered to herself, tiptoeing past them. But she accidentally kicked a stone, startling the girls awake. Oh my god! What are you doing? Are you spying on us? One of them shouted. Panicking, Baini darted away as the second girl yelled, What's going on? Realizing it was Baini, the two girls scrambled. It's one of the group one girls. Get something to write with, quick. One of them shouted, realizing Baini was on her way to secure the practice time. Smiling to herself, Baini thought, mission accomplished, as she ran off, delighted with her successful prank. At young Camellia Hall, Baini arrived first. I knew it. No one's here yet, but they've been very thorough with the planning, she thought, satisfied as she wrote down Red Group 1's presentation and practice time on the register. All set, she murmured, hiding among the flowers to wait. Soon, two girls from Red Group 2 came rushing in. Nice, I've caught a big fish, Baini smirked as she watched them hurry to secure their slots, complaining that Red Group 1 had claimed the best times. After they left, Baini waited patiently for the blue team's groups. I haven't heard the flute at night recently. I wonder who was playing it. She pondered while hiding. Own's cold expression during the duet kept popping into her mind, and she felt a pang of sadness. Why am I feeling down because of him? She wondered but quickly refocused as girls from blue group rushed in. Two more big fish. She mused, observing the blue team members still getting along well. After they left, she emerged from her hiding spot and reviewed the register. Now that they're gone, time to haul in the net, she said, feeling accomplished as she read through all the entries. As she walked back to the residence, she was beaming. The manager even complimented me for collecting the practice timesheets, she thought, her mood brightening. But as she arrived, she noticed a commotion. Why's everyone up so soon? She wondered, seeing the girls crowding around Dongi, clearly upset. Ah, Dongi's awake. She must have shown them the new arrangements. Some of them aren't happy being separated from their friends, Baini mused. Suddenly, one of the girls suspected of spying on them spoke up with a sneer. Someone seems to have plenty of spare time. So, where did you go off to this time? Well, I just came back from finding out what songs the Blue Groups and Red Group 2 are performing, Baini announced, drawing everyone's attention. What? How do you know that? The girls asked, amazed. I thought Red Group 2 was doing the national anthem. Did they change it again? One girl questioned. The blue team songs are confidential. How did someone lazy like you figure that out? The spy demanded. All right, everyone calm down. Baini said, hushing the group. Let me start with Blue Group 1. They'll be performing The Creation of the Universe. As you know, we, Red Group 1, will be performing The Age of Discovery. Blue Group 2 will present Hymn of Love, and lastly, Red Group 2 will still be doing the national anthem. The room fell silent as Baini finished revealing the lineup. Wow, I'm surprised you found out all that information. Turns out our song selection wasn't bad at all, one of the girls announced, and the others nodded, looking delighted. 
All right, everyone. Now that you've heard everything, please come to the practice room after breakfast. You're all dismissed, Dongyi said cheerfully. After breakfast, in the soundproof practice room, the girls began rehearsing. Whoa! I love the arrangement. I can't believe how good it sounds. We might actually win with this song, one girl said excitedly. The energy in the room lifted as everyone grew more enthusiastic. Everyone seems more motivated now that we have a shot at winning. Baini thought. Okay, we don't have much time, so I need to focus. I want to make our performance flawless. Determined, she called out to the group. Let's practice here at Camellia Hall, like it's the actual performance. Baini had been given the responsibility of leading seventy girls, and the pressure weighed on her. She couldn't let any of them be disqualified. I have to do my best for Dongyi. Who trusted me as the assistant leader, and I don't want to hear anyone criticizing my family again. She reminded herself, channeling her determination into every note of the rack she played. Focus, Baini. Focus harder. I can't afford to miss a single note. She urged herself, fully immersed in the practice session. Suddenly, a voice broke through the concentration. You have seventy more minutes until practice times up, ladies. The girls looked at each other, concerned. What? It's already been two hours, but we're nowhere near finished. Some exclaimed in fear, realizing how little time they had left to perfect their performance. Let's repeat the part we got stuck on three more times and then wrap up. Dongyi announced, calming the group. As expected of Dongyi, she's decisive and dependable. I need to support her. Baini thought, urging herself to focus harder as they resumed practice. Express the notes with more detail. This part is still unstable. I need to strum harder here. As they played, Baini felt that while the performance wasn't bad, it wasn't quite enough. There's nothing that will really impress the judges. If only we could inject some strong energy that captivates everyone. She reflected. Time's up. Please step outside, ladies. The staff announced, signaling the end of practice. Everyone, please head immediately to our private practice room. Dongyi instructed as they left Camellia Hall. She turned to Baini. "I'll leave it to you." "Got it," Baini whispered, feeling the weight of responsibility. Dongyi has so much on her plate as both group and team leader. "Can I handle this on my own?" She glanced at the members, noticing some seemed more motivated, but they still lacked unity. As she observed one of the girls talking to a storyteller, Baini called out, "Everyone, please head to the practice room immediately." The girl glared at her, muttering an unwilling "Oh, okay." Why does she always show up when someone gets all the attention? The girl, who they suspected of being a spy, muttered as she passed by Ni angrily. "Yes, yes. Please head to the practice room," by Ni repeated, outwardly calm but feeling the weight of the rumors surrounding her. Everyone thinks I distracted Jio Seal out of jealousy during the duet. That's why the rumors are harsher than before. It's just gossip. But it still stings. Baini shook her head, trying to brush away the negativity. I don't regret supporting Jio Seal, but why do I feel this strange unease? She slapped her cheeks lightly, refocusing. No, I can't get caught up in this. I need to focus on what's important right now. Back at the Red Group One's soundproof practice room, the girls looked reluctant to resume practice. I knew it. I let them rest because some complained, but now they don't want to get up. Baini sighed inwardly. We still have so much to do. Watching them move sluggishly, she thought, motivating people is harder than I expected. If it weren't for Dongyi's vassal ladies helping, I don't think I could have gotten them to move at all. As they slowly began to stand and drag their feet toward practice, Baini felt a pang of frustration. I really don't want to treat them like children, but how do I handle this? She wondered, keeping a calm exterior despite the uncertainty swirling inside her. Ha!、Huh, I'm so exhausted. Who knew it'd be this difficult to lead those girls? Maybe I should be content with the fact that I got them to practice twice. Baini muttered as she walked slowly outside the residence, feeling drained. She paused when she saw Own addressing a group of Imperial soldiers. Ha!、Huh. That's Own. What's going on? She wondered, surprised. He's with the Imperial soldier, and commanding them so well. She stood there. Observing him lead, he doesn't repeat himself, and his orders are so concise. Is that why I sense such strength and charisma from him? 
Suddenly, she realized she'd been staring. Oh no, he just noticed me. I should just leave and pretend nothing happened, she thought, turning to go. You seem rather calm today, Miss Bear, Own called out, stopping her. I was always calm, she replied, trying to sound unaffected. I'm glad you're not swinging your bare fists at me today, Own teased, making Biney turn and glare at him. What do you need to be a good leader? Confidence? She asked, her back still to him. It becomes a lot easier after you behead a couple of your subordinates, he quipped. But it's not like I can bring an axe into the practice room, she replied, confused. If it makes things more efficient, why not? Own joked, causing Bainee to look at him, wondering if he was serious. But I thought you were a pretty good leader, he added. I found it amusing when you made the ladies call out the names on the bulletin board on your second day here. That was only possible because people didn't know I was from Housebam. Things are much more complicated now, she said with a sigh. You don't look that distressed though, Own noted. In truth, Bainee found the competition fun. I've come to understand how diverse people are, she said. They're motivated by rivalry, envy, selfishness. It's interesting to see how varied people's desires can be. These were things I never imagined when I was younger. You think people's desires are interesting? Own asked. All I felt was disillusionment. Yes, I was disillusioned too, Biney admitted. When I was a girl, my neighbors would curse at me every time I went outside. But after a while, they acted like nothing happened and started treating me kindly. But I remembered every cruel word. That's when I realized a hard truth. Today's ally can be tomorrow's enemy, she tells him. I've always thought you were strong-hearted since the first day I saw you, Own remarked. Thanks for the compliment, but can't you give me any tips on being a good leader? She asked. Hmm, unfortunately not. You just need more experience. You can only master something by trying it several times, Own replied. Yes, I suppose you're right, Biney said, letting out a tired sigh. Oh, that reminds me. Who was the person who played the flute every night? Biney asked suddenly. She was a woman. A married woman, Own replied. Oh dear. Too bad for the heavenly emperor. I don't think anyone in the heavenly realm can manifest as beautifully as her. She was truly the best. I know I asked you to tell her to stop playing, but now I regret that, Biney said, turning away and taking a few steps forward. Was it that good? What kind of song was it? Own asked curious. Hmm, let's see. It went like this, Biney hummed the melody softly. I'm surprised you remember it after hearing it only twice, Own said, impressed as they walked side by side. Are you saying I have a good memory despite being a bear? Biney laughed. Nope, you've got it wrong. Own tried humming the tune, but mixed it up. It actually goes like this, Biney corrected him. As they passed a flower bush, Own reached out to shield her from a low-hanging branch, making her blush slightly. You know, the flute manifestation I mentioned earlier was truly beautiful. The song felt cold, yet lonely and painful at the same time. I really want to know who played it, Biney said, her voice calm. Who knows? You might meet the manifester later, Own replied. Can you tell me who it is if she works at Camellia Hall? Biney asked hopefully. She seemed extremely shy, Own said, his tone a bit tense. That's too bad. I really wanted to meet her, Biney said sadly, causing Own to glance at her thoughtfully. Oh, that reminds me, about the duet last time, Own began, causing Biney's heart to race. Why did he have to bring up the one thing I wanted to avoid? She thought, her nerves on edge. You must have been disappointed not making the top 100, even after adding your harmony so skillfully, Own said, his words calming her a bit. Oh, and you should really consider bringing an axe to the practice room, Biney joked, trying to lighten the mood. If I could give you one tip on leadership, Own continued, don't back down when it's necessary to fight. Don't be afraid of being condemned or hated. And don't expect everyone to love you. Hold your head high and smile, Miss Bear. You're doing very well, he said, placing a reassuring hand on her shoulder. After their conversation, Baini returned to the Red Group's residence. Own stopped near a peach tree, speaking to someone perched on it. Blue Group 1 seems to be in good spirits. They have two of the strongest players, the individual on the tree remarked. And Blue Group 2? 
Own asked. They seem anxious after their song was revealed, but it shouldn't be a problem, the person replied. Good. What about the red team? Own inquired. Red group two doesn't have a leader, and they're letting a few girls flaunt their skills. But the other 67 members are being neglected. Red group one, on the other hand, has involved everyone in the song. Each member has a role. I heard their song arrangement is the best so far. A little chaotic, but their performance is excellent, the individual informed him. I see. I'm looking forward to the match. Yawa, make sure to pay attention to the neglected contestants, Own said. Unlike your majesty, I've been working hard while you've been enjoying your little date, Yawa teased from the tree, making Own look stunned. What? Own asked, surprised. While you've been with that young lady, I've been toiling like a bee, Yawa said with a grin. Oh right. Would you like a plum, your majesty? Yawa asked, dropping a half-eaten piece from the tree. Why don't you give me the fresh one inside your right sleeve? Own responded, stepping back as he avoided catching the discarded fruit. You've got sharp eyes. I was saving this for later, Yawa said, tossing the plum. Here's your new one. It always surprises me how quickly you can spot the better quality items, Yawa remarked as Own stepped away with a hum. But you really should reconsider Lady Bam by knee, unless you plan to dismiss all the other candidates and break your mother's heart, Yawa added, stopping him. Then again, you're already disobeying her by spending time with me. Own blocked his ears playfully, pretending not to hear. His mother, the Heavenly Empress Dowager, had won the Heavenly Empress selection and performed her duties remarkably well, but she was never loved by her husband. Before his marriage, the late Heavenly Emperor had been deeply in love with another woman. Two weeks after his wedding, this woman gave birth to a son, Yawa. Fearful of upsetting his lover, the late Heavenly Emperor was reluctant for his legal wife to bear a child. Even on their legally required wedding night, his hesitation left the ladies-in-waiting embarrassed for the Empress. The lack of an heir soon became a concern for the realm, leaving the empress to drown in guilt. However, one day, she finally gave birth to Own, the long-awaited heir. Own's father was on the battlefield during the important naming ceremony, a ritual that involved ancestral rites and incense. Though excused for war, the truth was that he had been with his lover instead. While Own's birth may have given his mother some confidence, she remained painfully alone. When Own was about five, he boldly approached his father. Father, may I ask you something? Why didn't you marry the woman you love? Young Own asked. What did you just say? His father responded angrily. You should have fought the entire heavenly realm to crown her as empress. But since you didn't, you should at least be responsible for your legal wife and treat her with respect. Why are you raising your own son as a bastard and showing such contempt to the mother of the realm? Own continued his voice steady. Furious, the heavenly emperor slapped him hard. Is that what your mother said? Did she call your brother a bastard? Own, now on the ground with a bruised cheek, stood up, looking his father coldly in the eyes. You're a coward father, he said, his voice unshaken. His father stared at him, teeth clenched in anger, before walking away without another word. Perhaps that conversation weighed on his mind, for soon after, the late heavenly emperor brought Yawa and his mother to the palace, officially giving his lover the title of imperial consort and recognizing Yawa as his son. Own's mother seemed to take it in stride, never showing emotion, but Own couldn't shake the guilt. He felt responsible for their arrival at the palace, as if it were his fault. In truth, the late heavenly emperor spent his final moments with Yawa's mother, even taking her to the battlefield with him. During a walk, they were attacked, and an evil being assassinated him. Despite everything, Own's mother publicly directed her rage at House Bam, whose head was the general of the Imperial Guard. It was clear she still harbored some feelings for her husband, choosing to blame House Bam instead of expressing the fury she should have reserved for her husband. Own stopped in his tracks, recalling Baini's words about the flute's song sounding lonely and painful. Is that how my flute sounded? He wondered. After all, it was him who had been playing. On the first night of the Heavenly Empress selection, Own had played the flute, curious if any of the contestants would try to find him by following the melody. He didn't expect anyone to succeed, thinking most would give up partway through. But to his surprise, one person persisted. She kept going, even when she was lost in the maze, 
and eventually found him, following the tune as though it were a lover's thread. She even returned the next day. How adorable, he muttered. Yawa's voice echoed in his mind. That is, unless you wish to dismiss all the other candidates and break your mother's heart. Yawa was right. There's no reason for me to choose Bam by knee, own mused, sighing as he held the plum. I'm the one who needs to get myself together. Meanwhile, at Red Group 2's practice room, Dongyi gathered the group. All right, everyone, these are the final positions. Please make sure you've memorized your roles and the parts of the performance, she called out. The arrangements are perfect now. All that's left is to practice and manifest the song flawlessly, Baini thought, feeling the harmony come together better than the day before. If everyone unites perfectly, it will be an outstanding performance, she thought while playing her rack. Let's take a ten-minute break, Dongyi announced after a long session. So exhausting, Baini sighed, rubbing her temples. Her thoughts drifted back to Own's words of encouragement. I didn't expect him to encourage me like that. It feels like he gave me positive energy. She clasped her hands, blushing at the thought. Suddenly, her hands began to glow. What's happening? Baini wondered, feeling the energy inside her change, tickling her like a warm breeze. It's something only I can sense, but what are these emotions? She smiled, letting herself be swept up in the feeling. A flower sprouted in her hand. It looks just like any other manifestation I've made, she observed, though something about it felt different. Celestial beings were taught to manifest from a young age, starting with basic objects like bowls or plates. Over time, they move on to flowers and fruits. Competence varies widely, and only a few can manifest living creatures or natural elements like rain or wind. Rarer still are those who can maintain their manifestations for more than an hour. While creating flowers is relatively easy, only a select few can make flowers with fragrances. This flower has a scent. Baini thought, her cheeks flushing as she held the bloom. It's faint, but I can definitely smell it. I thought you had to be gifted to create scents or flavors, she mused, watching as the flower faded away. Determined, she decided to try again. Playing her rack, she manifested another flower and sniffed it. Huh? Why is there no fragrance this time? What went wrong? I made the same flower. Why didn't it work? Baini frowned, puzzled by the inconsistency. Practice is about to start soon. Please return to the practice room, everyone, their instructor called, startling Baini. Oh dear. I need to focus on practice, she realized, setting aside her worries. That evening, at the young Camellia Hall, the Red Group One gathered for their final rehearsal. Let's focus like it's the real competition. We'll go through all 20 minutes of the performance, Dongyi instructed. This is probably our last rehearsal. Everyone's worked so hard, especially the Nol Hyangjin members. They've really motivated the team, Baini thought, preparing to play her rack. Manifest and play the rack now, Dongyi ordered. As they began, Baini noticed something was off. The harmony is off, and the tunes are inconsistent. Is everyone too tired? She wondered, sensing the group's fatigue. Should we push through and finish the song? She decided to follow Dongyi's lead, but couldn't shake her concern. This isn't working. The performance looks fragile and messy, she thought as they halted their manifestations. How are we supposed to fix this? Bai Ni wondered. Okay, remember the points I mentioned, and let's try this one last time, Dongyi encouraged, maintaining her usual positivity. As expected of Dongyi, Bai Ni admired. She's always so upbeat and takes charge. Okay, try to unify the notes as much as possible. Be careful not to let them sound shaky, Bai Ni thought. I need to concentrate, she said, reminding herself, tension building as she resumed playing her rack. But once again, she felt herself slipping. No, it happened again, she thought, frustration mounting as the performance faltered once more. Practice time's up. Ladies, please get ready to leave the practice room, the instructor announced, bringing the session to a close. The girls shuffled out, their faces heavy with disappointment. Many murmured among themselves. It didn't sound that bad yesterday. What went wrong today? Baini thought. Is it because of what happened this morning? Earlier that day, a quarrel had broken out in their group's residence. Just admit it. You girls don't care about the contestants in the back rows. 
Do you? You've taken all the best parts and left us with the worst. One girl shouted angrily at a few others. Why bring it up now? We decided everything with a majority vote, the girl being accused responded. Majority vote? Don't act like I don't know you all teamed up to get what you wanted. What about the rest of us? The first girl shot back. By knee, walking past the wall outside, overheard the argument. Do they really have to fight like this? She thought, feeling tired. I should just rest. But then, she spotted Jio Seal with Lady Orium. As she walked past some members of the blue team, she heard them laugh. Oh look! If it isn't the little fawn, one girl mocked. You'd think she'd at least have some decency. How can she be so shameless after leeching off House Woon all those years and then stabbing Jio Seal in the back? That's why she's a fawn, another added, causing the group to snicker. Ungrateful beasts like her shouldn't be taken in. Baini froze, shocked by their words. What did they just say? How do they know? She thought about the storytellers, who were forbidden from sharing information with contestants. Did Jio Seal tell them about me? Her heart sank. Even though we had hard times, I was happy when we were together. How could our precious memories be twisted like this? It hurt to think that Jio Seal might have betrayed her. At that moment, their eyes met. Baini saw the tension in Jio Seal's gaze, but she quickly looked away. So, we've become strangers now. Like we were never friends. We're nothing to each other, Baini thought as she walked away, the weight of the moment heavy on her heart. Ha! I finally made it back to my dorm. What an exhausting day, Baini sighed as she stepped into the residence, her body heavy with fatigue. Just as she was about to relax, loud voices caught her attention. It's not too late to listen to me. We can't let Bam by knee take the second row. Someone shouted, pointing directly at her. It was the girl everyone suspected of being a spy. Someone else has to stand in the front for the sake of our reputation. Do you really think the heavenly empress dowager would listen to us if she is in that position? The girl's words stirred murmurs in the room. By knee stood there, quietly absorbing the tension. Of course, She'd wait until Dongi isn't here to stir things up, Baini thought. Let's change the positions while we still can. No one would complain if Dongi was in the second row. But why should Bam Baini get that spot? If she has any conscience, she should step down herself. The girl continued, her voice gaining support from her clique. And don't forget, people are calling the red team fawns now because of her. Baini felt her chest tighten. It's because of what happened with Jio Seal earlier, isn't it? These spiteful words cut deeper than she'd expected. Suddenly, Baini spoke, breaking the tension. Are you done? Everyone should get ready for bed, she said calmly, but her voice carried weight. Ha! Shameless. But that's just like you, thick-skinned and selfish. You even took the assistant leader role, and you're just a bam. The girl snapped back, smirking. Bai Ni remained composed. What does being a BAM have to do with being an assistant leader? She asked, locking eyes with the girl. An assistant leader has to be someone people respect and want to follow. You're the opposite of that. The girl replied, her words hanging in the air as the others watched, tension growing. Bai Ni closed her eyes for a moment, remembering Own's advice. Don't back down. Stand your ground when it matters most, he had told her. I need to fight back, she said inwardly. Baini's eyes opened, her resolve clear. Go to your room. If you can't do that, pack your things and leave, she said firmly. Who do you think you are to order me around? The girl shot back, anger flashing in her eyes. You're disrupting the whole group over something that's already settled, Baini countered, her voice steady but sharp. You're lowering everyone's morale and wasting precious time before tomorrow's match. Do you even understand that? She took a step forward. And yes, I'm in the center of row two. Who's going to take my spot? You? Do you really think you can master my part before the match? Can you flawlessly play my role? Baini asked, her words cutting through the tension like a knife. The girl faltered, her face pale as she trembled under the weight of Baini's challenge. The others remained silent, waiting for a response, but none came. For the past four days, all 289 of us have rehearsed this performance down to the finest detail. 
We've managed to come this far because each of us shed blood, sweat, and tears to carry out our roles, Bai Ni said firmly, her voice cutting through the tension. We've all worked hard to make this happen. If you're not happy about that, then leave now. The girl, silenced by Bai Ni's words, gritted her teeth, but said nothing. She turned away, accepting her defeat. Bai Ni felt her heart race in the aftermath of the confrontation, a small sense of victory filling her. She remembered Own's advice. Don't be afraid of being condemned or hated. Not everyone will love you, and that's okay. He was right. There's no point in seeking their approval, she thought, but without trust and support, good results are impossible in teamwork. She now understood why Own had looked sad that day, burdened by the reality of leadership. With a steadying breath, Bai Ni addressed the group again. In about thirteen hours, we'll be manifesting in front of the Heavenly Empress Dowager. We've all suffered these past few days, but today was the last day we could practice the Age of Discovery together. I want all of us to do well. Tomorrow is our only chance to compete in the fourth match of the Heavenly Empress selection. Her voice grew excited as she tried to inspire the others. The day of the match arrived quickly. All the groups were seated inside the grand young Camellia Hall, the air thick with anticipation. Okay, don't be nervous, Bai Ni thought as murmurs filled the room. Arise, everyone, the presenter called, silencing the hall as they stood to welcome the heavenly Empress Dowager. She entered with quiet dignity, taking her seat as everyone remained in respectful solidarity. Blue Group 1, please head to the back and prepare. Red Group 1, you ladies are up next. Stand by in the waiting area, a staff member instructed. Baini's heart began to race. Ladies and gentlemen, the show you've all been waiting for is about to begin. The presenter announced with enthusiasm as the two groups moved backstage. For your information, this match will be presented to the public via visual transmission. Unlike previous matches where the contestants manifested all at once, making the transmissions a bit chaotic, this time the public will be able to listen as if they were seated right here in this hall, like a radio from the human realm. The presenter continued with the rules. When the match is over, we'll begin the popularity vote. Blue Group 1 will perform The Creation of the Universe, and Red Group 1 will perform The Age of Discovery. After listening carefully to the two-hour performance, please vote for the group you believe gave the best manifestation. This will be followed by a popularity vote for the individual contestants. Out of the 1,047 contestants, you may only vote for the one person you're rooting for. To ensure fairness, this popularity vote will be conducted by the civil servants of the Heavenly Realms Public Poll Agency. His voice filled with excitement as he asked, Are you all ready to enjoy the show? The hall erupted into cheers. Please give a round of applause for Blue Group 1, who will perform The Creation of the Universe. Bai Ni felt a knot of tension in her chest as the curtains began to open. Why is it so dark? I can't see the contestants, she thought her eyes straining against the dim light. A sudden, deep drumbeat echoed, illuminating the stage as the blue group one began playing their rack. Sparkling lights shimmered in the air, slowly forming lava and sea waves, telling the story of the universe's creation. Wow! Stars! Baini marveled, feeling the intensity of the manifestation. The music from the danso and bipa intertwined, creating a sense of life and energy with each shimmering bubble. The stage then fell silent, leaving only the soft sound of waves. Why is it so quiet? She wondered, her anticipation growing. Suddenly, Gyoseal's rack filled the room with light, and a bird manifested, soaring across the stage and drawing everyone's attention. Baini stared in awe as the creature vanished as quickly as it appeared. What was that? She thought, eyes following its trail to the ceiling. The audience gasped as the bird flew overhead and Baini's own mouth hung open slightly as magic dust floated through the air. The blue group continued their performance, now visible. They look like heavenly fairies, Baini thought, her gaze settling on Gyoseal, who played with her eyes closed, completely absorbed in her music. It's Gyoseal, my ears have become more attuned these past few days. I can hear the manifestation so clearly now. Her melody is so beautiful and moving. Baini felt her admiration swell. She's exceptionally talented, different from anyone else. As Gyoseal manifested a glowing sun, drawing the audience's gaze, Baini noticed the faint fragrance in the air and caught a piece of magical dust in her hand. 
Hei Oyuam soon followed with his own dazzling display of flowers, birds, and fish. The performance ended with a burst of fireworks, leaving the audience mesmerized. Are you hearing this, everybody? Do you hear the applause? Blue Group 1 has just finished their performance. The presenter announced as the audience erupted in loud applause. That was Blue Group 1. A storyteller added, his voice filled with excitement. There's no other way to explain this. Bai Ni, seated behind Dongi, noticed her cold remarks. Fawns? Dongi muttered under her breath, clearly unimpressed by the Blue Group's display. Bai Ni glanced at her, confused. Dongi, she whispered, unsure of her teammate's reaction. A staff member walked up the steps, approaching Dongi. Red Group 1, please get ready to go up to the stage soon, she announced. The team quietly rose from their seats and walked toward the stage, waiting just behind the curtains. What are we going to do now? One of the girls asked nervously, her voice trembling as the team shared uncertain glances. The atmosphere was tense, with everyone looking discouraged. Bai Ni could hear the ongoing cheers for Blue Group 1 from the other side of the stage. What's happening outside? She wondered, catching bits of the judge's comments. That was brilliant. I really enjoyed your performance. It's almost hard to believe you prepared a manifestation of such quality in such a short time, one judge exclaimed enthusiastically. Suddenly, a teammate began hiccuping nervously. The group was momentarily stunned, scrambling to calm her down. Bai Ni shifted her focus from the curtains back to Dongi. Dongi, we need to change positions right now. Bai Ni said firmly, confidence filling her voice as the moment of their own performance grew nearer. Now? Dongi replied, looking stunned. Yes, but just my part, Bai Ni insisted. The girls who are supposed to start the song are petrified. I'll stand at the front. If things go wrong, is it okay if I rearrange the song a bit? Dongi hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Okay, fine. Bai Ni felt a surge of excitement as Dongi turned to the group. Gather around, everyone. Those at the front, pass the message to the back. Bai Ni's going to start the first verse. If needed, she might rearrange the song, so stay focused while manifesting. We'll begin at the count of four. Got it? The group nodded, the tension easing slightly as they focused on the instructions. Bai Ni noticed the girl who had been hiccuping earlier. Take deep, slow breaths. That's right slower, she said softly, giving her a calming hug. Feeling better now? She asked. The girl nodded, her hiccup stopping. I'm glad you're okay. Let's do this, Bai Ni said as she stepped to the front. The girls watched her, their faces flushed with relief. They've probably passed the instructions on by now. The ones in the front row seem calmer. Bai Ni thought, though doubt started creeping in. Did I make the right decision? Should I have stayed quiet? Maybe we should stick to the original plan. She clutched her skirt nervously. Red Group 1, please move to the stage. A staff member called, snapping her back to reality. Panic flashed through her. Oh no. Outside, Blue Group 1 exited the stage to loud cheers. Red Group 1 quickly walked on, taking their positions. Once the curtains go up, the performance will begin, Bai Ni thought, her hands cold from nerves. I'm so tense, she said inwardly. The presenter's voice echoed through the venue. Blue Group 1 played traditional Eastern instruments. Red Group 1, however, has mixed Western and Eastern instruments. Of course, there's immense pressure after Blue Group 1's outstanding performance. What kind of manifestation do they have prepared for us? Let's find out now. The curtains slowly lifted, revealing Red Group 1 as the audience waited in anticipation. Bai Ni's eyes quickly spotted the Heavenly Empress Dowager in the crowd, and her heart began to race. What do I do? I feel like I have to face the audience all on my own. A sinking feeling twisted her insides. Worse still, the traces of Blue Group 1's performance lingered on the stage. Are the other girls feeling this too? She wondered, noticing their slight trembling. Her gaze landed on Own. Own? She remembered his words, raise your chin up and smile. Bai Ni took a deep breath. Who knew it took this much courage to smile? She raised her head high and forced a smile. I'm going to keep Own's words in mind, she thought, her nerves settling just a bit. Presenting to you now, 
Red Group One's manifestation, the age of discovery, the presenter announced. By knee began plucking her instrument gently, playing her rack, and the crowd watched in amazement. She thought of her parents. By knee, our brave, precious daughter. You just need to enjoy yourself, they had always told her. Mother, father. I'm so scared. My heart's racing so fast I can barely hear anything around me. But standing here on stage, giving what might be a once-in-a-lifetime performance, somehow makes this tension exciting, she thought as the song began. Glancing at the crowd, Bai Ni felt some relief. Thank goodness. The reactions are still positive, probably because it's a familiar song. The girls are all playing well, and the manifestation feels stable. We just have to keep this up. For the next 20 minutes, the audience had to listen to their song without seeing the full performance, which Bai Ni knew could be a challenge. Twenty minutes isn't long if you're distracted, but it feels endless if you're focused solely on the music. She was thankful for their genius songwriter, whose rearrangement had brought the piece to life. The performance was designed to demonstrate cultural exchanges during the Age of Discovery. Western instruments symbolizing sailing across the oceans, and Eastern instruments representing travel across the desert. The concept was solid, but by knee couldn't shake a feeling of dread. The problem is, our performance lacks a strong dramatic effect. We don't have anything that could captivate the audience like Blue Group One did. As she glanced again at the crowd, her fears were confirmed. People were losing interest, with some already yawning now that the familiar part of the song had passed. Our group is still holding on, thanks to Dongi's vocals and the Nalhai Engine members, but we need something more, she thought, feeling the weight of the performance begin to drag. The girls were starting to make mistakes, their nerves getting the best of them, and it was throwing the entire group off. It's only been seven minutes? Who knew twenty minutes could feel this long? Baini thought, her anxiety rising. The Western instrument players were meant to create a powerful scene with giant waves at this point in the performance. Oh no, she realized, watching the waves flicker weakly. They're too small, too faint. They disappeared too early. The girls just need a little more confidence. Just a little, she urged silently, her body tense with frustration. She glanced at the clock. Thirteen minutes left, that's more than half the song. What am I supposed to do? Her mind raced. Every second felt heavier with the realization that things were slipping out of control. I need thirty seconds. Just thirty seconds to organize it, and I think I can save the latter part of the song. This is supposed to be Dongi's role, but she's at the back. Someone up front has to lead, by knee thought, analyzing the situation. We need an instrument that can play strong, sweeping notes, and Dongi's hegium can't do that. A gay hegium, it could work. But what if I mess up? I'm not a genius like Jayo Seal. And what if the other girls don't follow me? Maybe I should just stay put and go with the flow, she thought, tension building. But maybe I can do it. Like how a stream becomes a river, or raindrops form a lake. I just need to unify these scattered notes. By knee side, calming herself. Let's try this. There's no harm in trying. She focused fully, starting to manifest her rack. As expected, Dongi's thinking the same thing. Good, everything's moving forward. We just need to keep this momentum. Suddenly, the crowd burst into laughter at the drumbeats. The tension eased as the audience lightened up. Okay. The laughter is loosening up the mood, stabilizing the harmony. We'll keep this momentum going, by knee thought, a cheerful smile forming. As the atmosphere relaxed, the girls started harnessing their rack properly, giving the audience a stunning display of their story, the sea and ships gliding over it. How do I describe this feeling? It's as if time is moving slowly. Every note is intricate and complex, yet I can hear them all so clearly, she marveled. If anything lags, I'll raise it immediately. By knee thought back to the sincere flute player at Camellia Hall. I'll do the same, she resolved, smiling as she fully immersed herself in her rack. She manifested a cherry tree in bloom, its petals and scent captivating the audience. Oh my goodness! This is incredible! Wow, that was spectacular! Some girls in the crowd whispered in awe. Suddenly, By knee found herself in a quiet, still space. What's going on? Why is it so silent? No one's moving, yet I can still feel the last tremor of the string. 
I see the birds we just manifested. Am I experiencing time differently? She wondered, lost in the surreal moment. Oh, now I hear the applause. Somehow I feel free. I can see the audience's expressions so clearly, by knee thought, watching everyone cheer as they finish their performance. Even Owen was clapping. I've never felt like this before. I'm so happy, she thought, smiling as she waved at the crowd. Later in the evening, Bai Ni woke up suddenly. Huh? Where am I? She exclaimed, sitting up in bed. Hey Bai Ni, you're awake. Dongi said, noticing her step outside. Did you get some sleep? Everyone stayed outside so you could rest peacefully, she added, sitting beside her. They were that considerate of me? Bai Ni thought, rubbing her eyes. Here, have a little something. Dinner's almost ready, Dongi said, handing her a cookie. Thanks, Bai Ni replied, taking it. How do I feel? Dongi asked. It all feels like a dream. It's so strange, Bai Ni tells her. I know what you mean. We really gave it our all these past five days, Dongi said. Right, Bai Ni agreed, though her expression grew sad. I can still feel the strings resonating at my fingertips. The way it sent shivers down my spine. I can't forget that feeling, she thought, trembling slightly. Did I really manage to achieve that manifestation? What if it was just an ordinary one, and I imagined the rest because I was nervous? But that sensation, it's so powerful, like I've crossed a barrier for the first time, she reflected, a shy smile on her face. Don't laugh, but I don't remember what the judges said, Bai Ni admitted, causing Dongi to burst into laughter. They said the beginning was so boring and passive that it wasn't worth their time, but by the end, they had changed their minds. They thought it was excellent. Lord Hay even said he'd give us a high score for pushing through without giving up, Dongi explained, wiping a tear from her eye from laughing so hard. Really? Bai Ni asked, surprised. Yeah. Blue Group 2 was lovely but lacked strength and confidence. They were shaky. And Red Group 2, well, you could see they had formed cliques within their group, and the 67 members who didn't have big roles were so uninterested it was painful to watch. Ours was the only group where everyone played their part, Dongi filled her in. It wasn't easy, but I'm glad our efforts paid off, Dongi added. True, Bai Ni agreed, biting into her snack. How peaceful. This cookie tastes even sweeter now that I'm eating it with Dongi after all that hard work, she thought. You worked really hard for this performance. Seems I have an eye for picking out skilled people, Dongi remarked playfully. Honestly, it felt like I worked my fingers to the bone for a tough boss, Bai Ni replied, feeling shy. But we did great, right? Dongi said. Yeah. We did a really really great job, Bai Ni answered as they clapped their hands both smiling in satisfaction. The bus carriage was scheduled to depart at 10 a.m. sharp, please make sure to pack all your belongings and leave nothing behind, a staff member announced. Bai Ni, feeling content, had already packed her clothes and was ready to go. I'm all set, she thought, pleased with how everything was neatly wrapped. Nearby, two girls were chatting. If we don't make it to the finals, does that mean we won't get to meet the Heavenly Empress Dowager? One asked. Probably not. She was so beautiful, and her voice was so elegant, the other replied. The previous day's match had concluded at Young Camellia Hall. And with that, all the performances have ended. Thank you all for doing your best. Now, the Heavenly Empress Dowager will give her closing address, the presenter had announced. The Dowager had spoken warmly, thank you. Everyone did a wonderful job. I was happy to see such outstanding performances. You are all valuable individuals who will help the heavenly realm thrive. I will qualify as many contestants as possible for the finals after careful evaluation. Even if you are disqualified, I hope you'll continue to hone your rack and use your abilities for the heavenly realm. Bai Ni recalled the speech, though the details were a bit hazy. Still, she felt a quiet satisfaction. The results were to be mailed to the contestants' homes and each team would return wearing the uniform that marked their participation. The red team members would go home proudly in their red uniforms, and the blue team in their blue. For those who didn't make it, the uniforms would serve as a memento of the journey. Additionally, the red team received a naragi with a red tassel and pink butterfly, while the blue team's naragi had a blue tassel and green butterfly. Bai Ni looked at her own naragi, feeling a bit reflective. 
This feels strange. This was my first time participating in the Heavenly Empress selection, and I truly gave it my all in the first four matches. My efforts were recognized. Although her original goal was to become a grade 7 civil servant, she realized she had never pursued anything with this much passion and dedication. I've never invested this much time or effort into anything before. I want to push myself further, keep fighting, and see what lies ahead, she thought calmly, holding on to the Naragi as a symbol of her journey. Baini, are you done packing? Dongi called, pulling her from her thoughts. Yes, I'm almost finished. Oh, can I have your number? We should keep in touch, Baini replied politely. Sure, Dongi said, handing over her number. Ugh, it's too bad I couldn't find out who that man was in the end, she complained. Which man? Baini asked, puzzled. Oh, the sergeant of the Imperial Guard. I wanted to discover his real identity while we were at Camellia Hall, Dongi revealed. So she's suspicious of him, Baini thought, intrigued. Didn't you find him a little strange too? Dongi pressed. Oh, remember when the bulletin board was posted in just two places the day after the preliminary match? Baini recalled. There were too few locations considering the total number of contestants. Plus, breakfast time was almost over at that point. You're right. It was as if they were trying to test us or something, Dongi exclaimed, clasping her hands. Yeah, but for some reason, he knew I made three girls call out the names of those who had passed. I mean, I'm sure he knew because he was managing and watching over Camellia Hall, but I just couldn't shake this feeling, Baini said, her expression serious. What you mean is that he didn't seem like an ordinary sergeant, right? Dongi asked, catching on. Exactly, Baini confirmed, sharing Dongi's concern. I thought the same thing, so I tried testing him a couple of times. For instance, I asked him for some tricky favors, and he managed to do them all flawlessly. In fact, he even smiled and asked if I had any more requests, Dongi revealed. It seemed like he knew I was suspicious. I had no idea. Now that I think about it, there's no way a man like him would just be a sergeant of the Imperial Guard. This is just my hunch, but I'm guessing he might be a close confidant of the Heavenly Emperor, Baini said. That's quite possible. He definitely seems fishy. I should keep observing him closely, even at the finals. Since you have a sharper eye than I do, you should watch him too, Dongi suggested. I will, Baini replied, feeling a bit uneasy. What's wrong with me? Why do I feel so uncomfortable talking about Own with Dongi? She thought. Did your parents ever tell you anything about the Heavenly Emperor? Your father is a high-ranking official, right? Baini asked, trying to change the subject. I was told he's about 2.6 meters tall and as scary as a wild tiger. But besides that, not really. My father doesn't share much since it's classified information, Dongi said, looking lost in thought. A wild tiger? No, that's impossible, Baini said, shaking her head as she pictured the tiger she had encountered. Aside from a small number of servants and high-ranking officials, no one knows what the heavenly emperor looks like. It makes sense they're being secretive. The world would be in chaos if the young heavenly emperor passed away without an heir. He'll probably reveal his face to the public on the day of his marriage, after the Heavenly Empress is selected. Ladies, please get ready to board the carriage, came the announcement, drawing the girls' attention. I guess it's really time for us to leave, Dongi said cheerfully as they walked toward the entrance. Yeah, Baini agreed. Oh right. You live next door to Lady Jayoseel, right? Will you be okay? Dongi asked, looking concerned. Of course. Why do you ask? Baini inquired. It's just that she didn't look so great during our performance, Dongi said. Baini remembered spotting Jayo Seal in her seat after Red Group 1's performance, her expression one of sheer terror. She must be worried, because of Jayo Seal's expression yesterday, Baini thought. What about Jayo Seal? I zoned out after the performance ended, so I have no idea, Baini said. Oh, right. You said you couldn't even remember the Heavenly Empress Dowager's speech, Dongi said with a smile, taking her hand. I see. Never mind, then. Let's go home. She said happily as they exited the building. Thank you for joining us on this incredible adventure. If you enjoyed what you watched, please consider liking, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. Your comments mean the world to us and help us improve.
The next episode promises even more excitement and unexpected twists so stay tuned as we embark on this thrilling journey together. Keep the anticipation alive and we'll catch you in the next episode.